Alright, what's up guys? It's Trekstrun here, and today I want to go over a quick and simple guide to get you started in reversing. Now, I know that a lot of people who are now getting into this field are having trouble in some places, and when they look online for help, most of the tutorials are either either like sloppy tutorials, they're not really explaining anything to a full extent, or that it's overcomplicated. So I'm going to try my best to not do any of those. But then again, I understand that some people make mistakes and sometimes we miss points that we need to really talk about in our videos. But I'm going to try to show all show everybody how I did it at first to become, I'd say, at least a decent programmer slash reverser. So... First, we're going to go over the basics, and I think the number one thing everyone should know about starting off is memory management, okay? And the thing about memory management is Windows has a set system that it follows every time, so once you can master that and understand how it works, it will be a lot easier for you. So there's two types of um, memory that you can find. It's dynamic and static memory, and so... The thing about static is that static memory, they're compiled onto the binary, and dynamic is allocated on the stack. So if we go to, if we type in uh, temp ammo here and set it to 50, this is, these are two different things. This is at this, this um variable will be compiled onto the binary so whenever the exe generates this is going to be compiled onto the binary so it's always going to have the same address versus this um this is a uh this is a temporary variable and this is going to be generated it's going to be memory is going to be allocated for it onto the stack so this is never going to have the same address almost never going to have the same address So, let's go over a few things. We're going to go see how were you to find something that is that if you were to find something in the game. Like, let's take Call of Duty, for example. Let's say that the ammo was... Your ammo is 50, okay? And you wanted to make an infinite ammo sheet. So, what we can do here is... Well, we're gonna go ahead and make the the ammo code. Uh, we're gonna do F two. Actually, you should increase. So ammo plus plus. Also, this is not a coding tutorial. This is a reversing tutorial. So you should already know how to code. And here we'll just do. F3 does ammo minus minus. And F4 will give us the address. But we're not going to use that now. So we're going to go ahead and compile this. And we're going to run it up. So let's attach our cheat engine to the program. Now that we've done that, well, first, if we know that if our current ammo was 50, okay, we can look up, we can simply just look up 50, and we know that since, uh, we're not going to know for sure what the data type is in the game, unlike how we can see it here, it's clearly a 4 by int signed integer, we can instead just automatically assume, well, is there any floating decimal points? No. Okay. Well, we can ignore that, and that's why we can make the logical conclusion, like Occam's Razor, we can just automatically assume that whatever it is, whatever data type we think we're finding, if we just take what we know that what it's not, okay, no floating points, and uh, the number clearly isn't higher than 2 billion, so it can't be higher than 4 bytes, 
or just things like that. You can just assume. Maybe this could even be, since it's such a low number, it could even be a a byte, you know? It could be an unsigned byte, or it could be... We know that we, we wouldn't want ammo to be a signed byte because it should never be in the negatives, you understand? So we can automatically assume that if we were to have ammo, it could be... Um, it could be a signed 4 byte int or unsigned 4 byte int, but we can just take the logical guess, which we're going to assume that since it's less than 255 and it's greater than 0 and it should never be in the negatives, we're just going to assume the type is a byte type. So actually, we're going to recompile this. Have a better example with using a byte. So let's launch the application again. and hook onto the window with cheat engine. Okay, so if we know that our value is 50 and it's a byte, we're assuming it's a byte, we can just search that up easily. And I'm glad we got a lot of results, so now we can say we want to decrease the ammo. So let's say the ammo, oh, okay, wait, that's an, that's an error there. Did I mess that up? Oh yeah. Okay, let's compile again. Sorry about that, guys. And then we're just going to hook onto it. And search for 50. Okay, now we're just going to... We forgot that we if we're gonna print it out, it needs to be printed out unsigned. So we can print it out properly. Sorry, forgive me, I have a pretty bad um mouse right now. Okay, that should be better. So let's hook on and search for fifty again. And if we increase it, which we shouldn't have increased it, let's decrease it down to 48. So if we look for 48, we'll find that, oh, okay, it's a static address because it's compiled with the binary. And um, how do you know it's compiled with the binary? Well, if we take a look here, so this is the address for the exe, right? This is the module address, base address. Okay, if you go here, it's an uh, empty region well, because it's only allocated and filled here. And this is our main. This is near. This is pretty much near our main uh, main function here. And this is the beginning of the exe. So if we look onto here, it says that okay, from reversing tutorial exe, the base address from there plus five hundred five thousand six hundred and twenty eight in hex we will get this address here. So, you know, we do the same, if we do the same here, well, obviously, yeah, we'll find the address. Okay, well, it's compiled onto the binary, so that means you could even open up the binary in the tool like IDA, and in IDA, you could find the address if you knew where to look or if you had any clue what the address could be associated with. Or you can even do plug and play, you know, if you don't know, just keep on plugging in addresses into the cheat engine and see what you can find with that. Okay, so we know that that's how you get a static address, okay? And well, if saying that you were to find an address and it were to be static, this is what it would look like. Now let's do the same thing, but except we're going to make sure it's a, it is not, a, it's a dynamic address, something that's allocated onto memory. Let's do uh, ammo equals, and we're going to do a higher number, like 75. Actually, a lower number would grant us more values, I think. More addresses in Cheat Engine make it harder for us. Okay, so now that it's no longer compiled onto the binary and it's allocated onto memory, now let's try to find out. First of all, this address should break. Okay, this address shouldn't work anymore, which is, yes, that is the case. It does not work anymore. Now let's go ahead and 
look for 13. You see, we have a bunch of uh, values here. We can automatically ignore the green because we know that it's not a static address. But now we're going to have to find what we got. So we just increase the ammo. Yeah, let's just increase it. You see, I've already found an address that was increasing. And if we decrease it, it'll go down. So this is uh, a clearly a temporary, temporarily allocated variable. So this doesn't mean... Like, we would have to pointer scan for this. Now, we can go ahead and just start doing a pointer scan for it. So, just because you get a pointer path to it, does that does not mean you should call it a static address? Because it's, it's not static, you just found a path that always leads to that address. Now, we're going to get into paths later, but we're just going to go ahead and generate a pointer path right now. Now the good thing about these is if it does not ask for you to generate a pointer map, you really don't got to, but it's, I mean, you could and just add, compare the result here, but eh, it's not really that necessary. So we're just going to go ahead and set the maximum offset value to default. Now if a game, so th what this is going to look through, um, whatever pointer path it finds, if the offset value is higher than this number then it's just going to skip it but let's say like there was one that was like 5000 and it was an actual offset to the offset from whatever last pointer it was at and let's say the offset was 5000 and you only got 4095 here you wouldn't be able to get that pointer understand what i mean so out of all the billions of pointers it generates only one of them is the true pointer path. Now, there's another way to get that, but honestly, it's really not that important or serious because if you can get one that works, then it, it doesn't really matter. Obviously, if you had the true pointer path, you'd be able to pointer trace and see what pointers it led up to and what's in those pointers as well, but we're not. it's not really that important right now. So we're just going to go ahead and... Um, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and make a... Ammo pointer, just name it whatever you want. So, as you see here, thread stack, and obviously, like I said, the it's a temporary address, so we're gonna see shit like this. Or you know, the module is not might not be thread stack, but it'll be it'll be some kind of module will be in. So these are all pointers, oh, like not pointers, uh, pointer paths that always ends up whatever its final offset is always ends up at 13 or well, holds the address that ho holds the address that we're looking for that holds the value 13 so we can save that let's close the application and launch it back up and if we load the address you see the old address for EA it's it's useless now because it's not going to be the same you know the it's going to generate a whole new address allocate a whole new memory in a whole new memory region so we found it again this is our temporary ammo if we increase it it goes up we decrease it it goes down just like we explained so this is a pointer path so obviously we'll be starting off at thread stack zero and Thread stack zero, the address of that plus FD8 will give us 13A4828300. Then if we add 18, we get that. And if we add eight, if we add 0x8, we get that. If we add 0x30, we get that address. We, you know, so on, so on, till you get to the end, where at this address here, 13A4827310. Once we get there and we add 2C8. Oh, sorry, I meant, um, once we get to 358D0FF2D0 and we add 80AE0, we get, we add the offset 8E0 to that address, we will, we get the final part, which is the, the ammo that we, that we were looking for. Okay. So now you've already, now you know the difference between static and dynamic, and, um, you've also learned a lot more things like how its com static addresses are compiled onto the binary so that means you could open it up in any reversing tool like ida and easily inspect it 
And now uh, you know how to scan for a pointer. Okay, that's pretty much the basics. And if, like I said, um, let's see if you ever get confused on this part, comment down below. But you should always keep this on. Keep this on and keep it on three. Try to put as much threads as you can if you want to go faster. And like I said, um, so you see how the offset value there was 4,095? max offset value all of these offsets here all of these offsets in here should never exceed 4 4095 okay but let's say like let's say instead of ADO let's say it was 5005A5F okay that was the offset value well we're not going to be able to um find that true pointer path inside the pointer scan well because why well our maximum also value is only 4095 it's not what we need to be which we can change it to like 5a 5f whatever i had it at then then you'd be able to scan oh sorry it's an integer not hex i apologize so let's just assume like 15,000 would would get us there i don't know the exact conversion i was never good at converting it by an on in my head but anyways now we can move on from that we know what the difference between those two now the next thing people need to know about is structures and arrays and classes and stuff like that juicy topic oh yeah I love talking about this because this is really gonna be your bread and butter and your core core basis is going to be all about knowing how to do this if you can't do this you're going to struggle and you're going to struggle a lot and you're not going to know what to do and when you're going to have to replicate those structures or classes on your end you're just going to be stuck okay and this will kind of also be like a semi entity list kind of tutorial thing i guess you could call it that anyways let's create a class and let's name it let's let's just call it entity Okay, and in this entity class, let's store a few data members. Let's do float. Uh, let's let's create a structure. Let's call that vector three, and add x, you know, or x, y, and z. Okay. Let's say we store vector three here. We call it position. All right. So at the address of whatever entity is, at zero x zero offset from that address. It stores position. Now, if you know anything about data types, you know float is a what? It's a four byte float, floating precision point. So if it's four bytes, then we can automatically assume if we're storing three of those in here, it's what? Four, eight, 12. Okay, so we know vector store, vector three stores 12 bytes. So from entity, from the beginning, from the address of entity to position, the offset difference is the offset difference here is 0x0 zero zero, okay the offset from the beginning of the entity address to here is 0x0 zero zero. the size of vector 3 is 0x12 zero okay so knowing that information when we do let's say we do float speed we also know that float is a 4 byte floating precision points so what can we assume what the offset from entity would be if we know that this is 0x0 zero zero, because this is the start this is the first member inside of the class it's 0x0 zero zero. and we know the size of this structure is 0x12 bytes what can we assume this is so I'm gonna give you like 10 seconds to figure it out it shouldn't be that hard All right, so if you said the offset from entity to speed was 0x12, you are correct, okay? The size of this structure is 12 bytes, or 0x12 bytes, sorry. Um, I, and then again, I'm wrong once and one more. It's actually not... Uh, yeah, it's not 12. It's like, it's just 12. I mean, it's just 12. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm not very, like I said, I have a hard time 
converting simple hexadecimal to decimal. I know it's embarrassing. But um, we know the size is 12 bytes away from each other. So we can automatically assume that the offset is 12. And um, hold on, we're going to get back to this real quick. All right, sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Um, so we know that this vector is, this structure holds 12 bytes. And now that I remember it's it's zero x c, so this would also be the offset from entity to speed is zero x c. The size, however, is zero x four. So let's say we create another another member, and this time it's byte and it's a flag. Okay. So what would this now be? It's no longer um. You know, now that now that we know that from position to speed is I meant from entity to speed is zero x c, but the size of speed is zero x four. What does that mean? Our byte flag. What what will it be at? So I'm gonna give you some time to figure that out. Okay, so we know that from, um, we know that float speed offset is directly after position. We should know that flag is directly after that, but that's, um, flag holds four bytes. So what do we do here? Well, we're just going to go ahead and add those four bytes to, um, whatever speed was at. So if it's zero XC, um, C, D, E, F, and then that's 11, right? I think so. Hold on. Let me pull out the, you know, I'm, I told you I'm really dumb. I have no idea how to calculate it in my head. Okay, that's just 10. So this offset value from entity to flag is 0x10. That's the offset. And what's the size? Well, it's a byte. Unsigned byte or signed byte doesn't matter. It's 0x1. Now, let's go ahead and create this entity class. And we're going to do static entity. I'm going to call it entity. And we're going to do. We're just going to go ahead and print out the address. Also, you should never really use this, but like I'm lazy, so we're gonna use it anyways. Okay. No, the address is that address here, so we're just gonna open this up. We're gonna attach. Pointer should break. And let's just add the address. Okay, so we have the address in memory. If you load it up, well, it's empty. I never put anything into it. That was dumb of me. So let me just add some stuff real quick. Um, Let's say... Sorry guys, let me just get that done for you. All right. And then speed, we'll set this to 0 0.50 and flag set this to 1. We'll set the flag to 15. Uh, actually, no, 20. Sorry, guys. So let's load it up now. Okay, now let's attach again. Should be the same address. 
Oh, actually, no. This one's changed because I, I recompiled the binary. Sorry about that. So, yeah, the only reason why st our static addresses are changing now is because I'm recompiling the binary. So, that's why it's changing. Should it not be the same? Obviously, like, if your game developer updates the game, obviously that static address is going to break. But let's say if I were to... Um, did I get the address? Yeah, I did. Let's say if I were to close this out and then launch it back up, the address will be the same. Just clarifying that in case you guys got a little bit confused there. The address will be the same. Okay, let's open up this structure in memory. Now we see here it's filled up now, and we see, okay, well... We have 5, 10, 15, 0 0.5, and that's empty because it's it's a byte value, not a float, so we're not going to see anything. Well, what do we have here? Oh, yeah, well, we've, we've assured that the position was 5, 10, 15 on X, Y, and Z, and that's exactly what's here. Okay. And our speed right after that is 0 0.50. And the flag, which is a byte, which would be at this address here, now let's go into here and go to this address. It's 20, just like how we knew it would be the whole time. Because that's what the that's what we have in our code. Now let's start calculating what I was talking about before. Remember I was telling you the offset of blah 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 is blah blah blah. Okay, well entity. This address here that it's highlighted, this is the address for entity. And like I said, the offset at 0x0. Zero it stores its first member, which is vector three, which is a vector three structure, which holds what? 12 bytes. So it's zero XC. So if let's take this address here, put it in there and let's go to the end of the vector and put that in there. Oh, so sorry. I meant to put it right here. Sorry. This will fix that. 0xc, like I told you, the, the, the distance from entity to the end of vector 3 is 0xc. The reason why I'm putting it on speed is because it ends right here. See, 4 bytes from 40 to 44, this is where the structure ends. So we get our 4 bytes here, next 4 bytes here, next 4 bytes here, and we're done. So this is uh, 0xc. So that's where we set speed to what? It's offset from entity is what? 0xc. Well, that is exactly what we have here. Well, we've, we've proved it to ourselves. Now, now next thing we got to do is get the flag. All right, so the distance to the flag is exactly one. Uh, it's a whole four, but it's plus one. You know what I mean? So it's going to be not plus one. Sorry, it's a whole four. So we're going to do we're going to do this plus four. This plus four. And this gives us this address here. We're going to copy that. And if you look here, this is the exact same address we have here. Yep, the exact same one. So we know that the distance from entity to flag is 0x10. All right, so we're going to we're going to go back and we're going to do this. And boom, if you take the flag field, Subtracted by the the starting address of entity, it's the distance is 0x10. Just like I told you. And if we load this up and set this into byte decimal, and if we go to 48, this is the address, same one. You can see the flag value is 20, just like how we have it here. Okay. So that is how you understand how structures work in memory. Now let's spice it up a bit. We're going to do the same thing, except, all right, we're going to do this on the heap too. So you should never, you should never do it like this, guys. Don't ever allocate a pointer like this. Use smart pointers. Or if you're going to do this, make sure you delete the memory or else it's going to cause a memory leak. Anyways, uh, we're just going to recompile and this is going to break the address. So we got to get it again. All right, now we got a pointer in our address. So how do you think it's going to work now? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's different because we're now we got to know what is the what is the byte value of a pointer? 
well, it can't be what we're going to assume it is. So let's go into here. As you can see, we come here, we're looking, oh, where is our, it, there is no 10, 5, 10, 15, it's, what happened? Well, let me show you. Let's go into dissect data structures, and we're going to define a new one, open it up. Now we see here, whoa, what is this? Okay, this is a pointer now in our entity class. But we have our speed here, and we also have our byte value of 20, which is the flag. Now, if we open up this pointer, now what do we have here? We have 5, 10, 15. Okay, so we've gen we've allocated memory onto the heap, which is not a good thing to do, by the way. Before we have all this excess BS that we shouldn't even shouldn't even be in this memory region. But anyways, now that we have that there, and you also see pointers that's pointing back to itself, so it's a ridiculous. So stuff like this will happen, or well, not pointing back to itself, just a lot of random pointers pointing to anywhere in memory. Anyways, we have our vector 3 here. It's stored as a pointer. Okay, wow, awesome. We know that now. So, what would this value be? Now that we see that, okay, they're conjoined together now. It's a... Sorry, let me open up the data structure again. That was pretty dumb of me to close it. Now it's no longer going to be the distance from entity to position is 0xc. No, it can't be. Well, why? Well, because we're first we're on an x64 architecture. Okay, so every address is going to be an 8-bit address, not a 4-bit address, not a 8-byte address, not a 4-byte address. So if we look here from the entity pointer, from the entity address to the pointer, Obviously, the offset is 0x0, but the size of the pointer is 0x8, which is why on this offset, if you can see it here in the structure, um, the speed is stored at 0x8 instead of 0xc. Okay, so that's that's how you deal with the pointers and stuff. And you'd be able to read the pointers just the same. And we also have our flag here. Okay. Now let's move on to sort of doing entity lists. Now this is going to be fun, very fun, guys. I'm right. It's going to be so fun. So we are going to do. We're going to go ahead and create an array. All right, and we're going to do an entity entity array, and we're going to set 255 max a byte max worth of uh, members or whatever it's called zero base indexed array all right and we're going to we're going to go ahead and set the first five of the array um, we're gonna we have to make a new entity well let's just do let's just do three we're gonna do entity Entity one, uh, entity two, entity three. All right, and we're gonna do entity one, entity two, and entity three. So this is regular entity class and an entity class array. And now we're going to print out the address to our array. Or oh, I think we could just do that because it's technically already a pointer. It's not, it's an array, but it's technically a pointer. Okay. Let's add this address. Okay, what can we see upon looking in here? Well, I mean, I see quite a bit of stuff of information here. And let's actually open this up, too. Well, as we can see, you know, a lot of it is stored a, tw almost quite a bit of storing here. Uh, because I guess it's trying to fill all of it up, so it's going to automatically fill it with a default. 
this is I think I can explain this better if I change this up. Sorry, guys, because it's probably wondering. Whoa, there's like over more than what you said. <laughs> yes, you're you're right. Um, let's let's make a constructor to make this easier. Um, I need a vector three. Give it a vector and float for speed and bite flag. And we're going to do this dot position equals at vector. Actually, you know what? We should um, throw in a reference here. And we're going to do this dot speed equals speed and this dot flag equals flag. Okay, um, so we're going to set these to, so we know that it's a dud, we're going to set it to 1, and we're going to set this to 1, and we're going to set the flag to 1. And then we're going to do, we're going to do 19, 7, negative 5 for this one. And... Then we're going to do 15, and our flag is going to be 2. Sorry, is it not allowing a reference? Well, let me just fix this real quick. All right, let's copy this over. <laughs> and we're gonna put 50 here and this will be set 12 and then we guess we do 55, 96 and then we can do 20 or 12 again, whatever. Same thing here, we'll do lower numbers and 22 and nine. All right. What's the error here? No instance of, oh, sorry. Okay. All right, now let's run this again. Should be a lot, you should understand it more. And that also helps understand why that happened, why everything happened it, it did when we first showed the structure. Let me see. I'm much better. Okay, let's open this up. As you see, um, these are now different than, you know, these ones are dud pointers, sorry, dud, dud structure, uh, sorry, dud classes. Because now since we've allocated 255 uh, worth of, what well, is this technically not, this is supposed to be 254. To be a byte. This is a byte's worth. Because it's zero base. Sorry about that. Um, Actually, no, no, no. This is byte. Sorry. It's zero base, but it needs to be higher than one. I'm sorry about that again. Um, do We know here this is our not dud classes, like how we set it. We have 15, 2, 15, 2, 50, 12, and 22, 9. That's what's here. Okay, so this is an array. The array address is this, and in this array it stores, it just pretty much smacks the entity class at an offset. So if we know the whole class is 0x10, okay, the whole class size is 0x10, well, that we know, okay, then this is the, from 0x10 away from that address is our, should be our, from this one should be our next one. And yep, there it is. There's our new entity class. So well, if we do the same thing here, 0x20, well, what do you know? It's at our next entity class, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay. Now, let's do the same thing, but let's, that's how some entity lists will look. But let's do the same thing, but make it more different. 
Now we're going to, instead of asking for uh, looking for references, we're going to look for addresses instead. Okay, hold on. Sorry, we don't need to do that. We can just do this here. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, now let's launch it again. <clears throat> and see what we can get. And let's actually shrink this down to three. All right. Let's load it up again. Let's load this in memory. It's already looking different. That's what we want. And what do we see here? Well, okay. Um, this isn't what we've had it last time. Now, instead of it having a 0x10, there was the, uh, every, zero, well, at the beginning, there was the entity class, and then 0x10 away from that, because that's the size of entity, there was another one. Well, it's just pointers now, okay? So, it's better if your lists look like this, because then you just, you're just working with pointers, which is just so much easier than having to calculate everything yourself. You would just open this up and say, oh, okay, well, I just need this part here. I just need this little part from zero from this address to zero x ten is what I need. And just copy that whole part. You see, well here, okay. Um that's fifty twelve. So fifty twelve is right here, fifty twelve. And say twenty two nine, what's that? Twenty two nine and obviously the beginning should be fifteen two. Just like how we have it, and if we have a pointer to the entity class, and then that pointer to the entity class is a pointer to the vector three class, which is nineteen six negative five. So this is the kind of stuff you're going to be seeing. This is the kind of stuff you're going to know have to know how to deal with. Okay, like there's going to be a lot of junk data, but some of it might actually be useful as well. Okay, so this would be the entity list that you calculate everything from. Okay, then you would just call that the entity list. So then you can we can get even more complicated but i'm not going to get into that because you probably already know where this is going well let's say we get an entity like we have a uh, entity list pointer of entity list pointer <laughs> um not entity list a pointer to an entity list pointer uh, no a pointer to an entity list full of pointers to entity classes <laughs> see you see how you see how complicated it gets so um, now that we have that, we understand this part now, calculating the, the, the what it would look like in memory. Okay, so let's see, what else can we learn from? Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Hopefully you understood a little bit. Hopefully. And I'm really, like, doing this all raw. I'm not, I haven't rehearsed or anything. I just went on Visual Studios and just started thinking about stuff to do. So hopefully this isn't too bad. You know, always comment down if you have any, like, concerns or questions or things like that. So now, you know, we you would apply the same logic if how we did to find ammo. Let's say we want to find the entity list, okay? Well, let's let's pull something that we know that they will have, okay? Well, let's just change speed. Oh, we don't got to do that. We have our speed here, which is 15. Let's say... Um, if we get a synch asynchronous key state, and let's say it's F2 and 1. The byte flag of 1. Uh, let's say... Entity 1 speed increases. Okay. So when we're going to count uh, entity one speed. 
and it's so mean we have to throw this into a while loop. Always sleep your while loops. Don't forget about that. One one nano one millisecond is fine, but the more the merrier, obviously. Save more resources. <laughs> let's build. And let's run this up. Let's uh, increase 16, 17. Okay. Let's go into here. Nope. We're going to need the address, though. Open this up in memory. All right, the first entity, if we hit F2, you see it's increasing. So let's close out of this. We know that's working. Now let's say that we knew the value. This could be health. This could be position. This could be anything. So well, let's just assume that we know the speed. Whatever you think is associated with the player is what you want to look for to get the entity. So let's say, okay, 27. Uh, I guess this is the one here. Is this the only one? Yeah, it is. Okay, whatever. <laughs> well, let's just say we did find the entity that had their speed increasing to 30. We open this up. Well, what do we see when we open it up? Well, you're going to have to figure out yourself where the beginning of the structure begins. But we can automatically assume... What, what can we assume, guys? Well, if we know where... Uh, where is the speed at? Sorry, let me just increase it. Okay, this is speed, and from speed, it's the entity vector 3, right? <laughs> yeah. So we know that this has to be, this is the beginning of the structure. I mean, the class, or structure, whatever it could be. This is the beginning, all right? This is where we start. So we can assume, I mean, obviously, there's junk data up here. So... It's really, it's it, it's for you to recreate on your own. So let's say you were to recreate this. Let's recreate it together. This is how I would do it. So let's say, like, I wanted to get just to this top right here. Well, you would technically, if you didn't know what the exact, um, what the exact, actually, let's make a structure instead. Structure doesn't, structure class don't matter. Uh, let's say we didn't know the exact name of this pointer. We just knew it was a pointer. We didn't know it was a vector three. Well, we can just do, what can we do here? We can just do void pointer. And we call it like, uh, well, not padding, but pointer unknown. And say here we know, okay, the next part is float speed. and It's speed and it's a float. Or let's say it was our health, whatever. We can do speed. And then we didn't know what this was or anything like that. So we would, I would, if I didn't know what something was without figuring it out, then I wouldn't add it. But let's say like this byte flag, you know, we have this as a byte. Let's say this flag was to indicate whether that entity was alive. So if I killed the entity and it changes to zero, and then when they respawn, it goes back into two. So I said, oh, okay, um, you know, I could... Add it as a un, um, an unsigned byte because you see it will take up all of, this address is clearly taken up for another pointer. If I knew that was that, or sorry, not unsigned byte, unsigned int flag, or go back to unsigned byte and just put that flag. Usually, flags are always unsigned bytes, so it doesn't really matter. Well, this is this is my general um, recreation. If I didn't know everything to it, but then let's say later on I figured out. Okay, every time they move, the guy moves, it increases, or whenever he jumps, his this gets higher, and when he goes back down, it's back at six. Okay, well that's their position, obviously. So then I change this here. Um, uh, it's not defined in that in that con in that current scope. It's not defined. I change this to a vector three, but remember, it's not a regular vector three. It, this is clearly a pointer to a vector three, so it's a pointer if you're here too. And boom, let, let's say like I get the address and I cast it there, and I do you know pint equals no, let's do pint p equals reinterpret cast. Um, 
reinterpret cast. No, we don't want to get a pointer. We just let's say this is internal. By the way, this is how you'd get a um how you get a value at a memory address internally. So we know that the address starts off here at um what's this one? What's this address? Yeah, we know it starts off there. Uh, can we get gather it? No. Can we actually add twenty eight here? Yeah. Um sorry, we means you gotta change all this here and this would be to a byte. Okay, so um I'm too lazy to figure it out, I'm just gonna add it here. Don't be lazy like me. Okay, so this is the address. Okay. So we know that the address begins here. We don't need it. To, we don't need it to be a pointer. So we can just do reinterpret cast at this address, and then we can access everything here. So if we say pointer, or well, it's supposed to be vec. I don't know why I didn't change that. Let's say P, we want to get the X position. There we go. Now we can access the data just like that. It's that easy. Um, I could load up another Visual Studios and show it to you how you do it externally. But uh, just, just try out the code. I'm pretty sure it would work regardless. So we're going to do read process memory, and then we don't have a, you, you get your own handle, That's you figure that out yourself, and then it's a LPC void, oh, you can just type cast it to a pointer, who cares, any kind of pointer will do. And then let's say the address was that, and our buffer is going to be that, it's the p int, and the size t, we're going to do size of... Uh, we know the size of p int is 0x10, but, you know, we can have the, you know, it do it for us and don't care about that. Then that's how you would be able to read uh, the vector again. Then again, if you were to, if it say here, you know how it says it's a pointer here. It's not going to store a vector three. It's going to store an address here, uh, eight byte address, an eight byte address. So if you are external and you try to access this. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? Well, simple, an access violation, because then your 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 external your exe is going to try to um, access that address on its own memory instead of the game target's memory. So what you would have to do here is um, <coughs> you would have to do it another way. You would actually have to convert this. You would actually have to read the memory at that address and plug it back in. So, like, what you could do here is you would do instead of that, it'd be say at p vec, okay? And then that's how you would you would read the address. But you would already have to have um, filled in the p entity structure, and then do the same thing here and read like p.vec because that would store the address um i know and you would change this to vector 3 the size of vector 3 actually no 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 size of void pointer because we need the a whatever size it is if it's x86 it'll be four bytes and if it's um x64 it's eight bytes for an address so um and we would store that in we wouldn't store that in P. I seriously don't have a default for vector three. Oh God. We would store that here instead. So that's how you'd get that. Um, okay. And while we understand that part, I'm not really, I don't really do externals anymore. So forgive me. It's probably a better way to do it instead of doing it like that. But like I said, I do not do externals at all. So it's not very convenient for me 
to try to explain something, how to do something externally. I mean, I, I know the basis of it, and if I were to experiment, I would know what to do, but right now, I'm just winging it. So now you did that. Now you know how to find an entity, and, well, actually, no, let's go back. You don't know how to find the entity, so you just found a entity. Forgive me. Let's go back into Cheat Engine. So we know that this part here, plus 0x10, is what we're looking for. So let me let me steal. Oh, I removed the address. Good thing it's here. Let's take this address. Look at here. Now we know that this is entity. We know that this here is entity one. We know it's entity one. And yeah, there we go. Takes up C four bytes. Four bytes. Eight eight byte address. And boom, our speed. So we know that. That entity one does is is that's the address to entity one. Okay, we know that this is the address right here. So what we're gonna sorry, not right there, right here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pointer scan for this. Now, like I said, out of all those paths that um cheat engine generates, only one of them is true. We're not gonna go over how to do that, but we're just gonna see if we can get lucky enough on our first try to find a find an entity list so wow it's going to be a lot of tracing to do yep that is a lot of tracing so hopefully we get lucky we're not we're not pretty much guaranteed to be lucky here you see some memory is already breaking so let's filter out invalids okay get some addresses now let's go to let's let's find a good one small one uh what's the smallest one here we'll, we'll just do this one we'll do one at the top why not okay so we know that this is a address here and this is a pointer to our thing. And I don't know why I have it like that. Sorry about that. Huh. So now we're going to do what we I like to call a pointer trace. All right. So we're going to start off at thread stack plus E80. Okay. We're going to add that. So we're, this is going to be our base. Our base is going to, sorry, let me re-add that. This is going to be our base. I'll call it entity one base. We're gonna browse this memory region and we're gonna open this up and dissect data structures. Okay. So here's how we're gonna go ahead and read that. So we're first let's take a look at the pointer real quick. Uh this one, this one. So we know that when we get the thread stack module base address plus E80 plus 220, it is, well, actually over here, it's getting the pointer to itself. So we we enter into 1FA, which is right here. We enter into here. Next thing we do, we need to get offset 220. So we're going to scroll all the way down till we get to 220. As you see, okay, well, there's a pointer right here. We're going to open up into that pointer. Then we're going to scroll all the way to 500. Like there might be data here that's useful, so you don't have to look through it like I am. But as you can see, what can we see already that's semi, like, like semi, not um, the same, like a pattern we're following? Well, at the top, we have two pointers down here. We know that our, well, we know, we don't know if we were to do a random game, we wouldn't know. Unless you had an entity count, and if, if and if you were searching that this is a array pointer list, not just an array linked list. So if we assume okay, we have three. Well, look, there's three pointers here, and they seem to be what are they doing? They're like following each other. So we go to 500. See, that's the stuff you need to start paying attention to. Like, I wasn't even expecting that myself. So at 500 offset zero. What do you look? It's literally all you can see all of the entities like they're right next to each other. And if we go to 138, it should be the same dilemma here. 
Oh, except, oh, it's different here. I guess this, this is where it cuts off. We open up 138 and 70. And then we go to 70, which is right here. And in 70, we get 268. And in 268, where do we go next? We go to 508. So this is um this is currently the address where it's storing the um what do you call it the entity one now this isn't a really good example this is wasn't I knew it wasn't gonna come out how I wanted to because this is obviously not the true pointer path but um you would see that there's entities here and I guess if you were to explore them at the same time let's go back to five oh eight. I'm pretty sure it should be here at 508 as well. I guess, uh, yeah, right here, 22 and 9, which would be Entity 2's 22 and 9, right here, Entity 3. Then if we open up that pointer, it should be 532 when we open up that pointer. Uh, it's a little bit messed up, though. There's going to be error. oh, wait. Yeah, there's going to be errors like this that's going to happen. And you just gotta, you just gotta figure it out yourself. This is just a little example and stuff, but th it's like there's really not a good idea to be like pointer tracing like that if you don't have the true pointer path. And to get the true pointer path, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit complicated. You kind of have to go through each offset address and view the registers and find out what accesses the address, and that's uh, pretty complicated stuff. Okay, so what I like to do sometimes is like I just like to get all the entities. Let's say get one entity and then get another one. Let's say I look for entity two and found them. Then I'd compare where they're at in memory. And if they're close by, then they're probably in a linked list. But if they're not, then it's probably a it's a pointer list, pointer array list. Okay, so that's going to be it for the first part of the tutorial. Hopefully you guys understood something. And let me know if you guys have any questions. Comment down below.